the Endless Golf Podcast, brought to you by Toyota. And welcome in to another edition of the Endless Golf Podcast. And joining me is a very special guest today, my dear friend Barry Strive, better known as The Stallion. And I'll tell you what, Stallion, it was 1982 when we first met back at the Paddock Nightclub. And I was thinking about this driving over here today. You know, my, I met you and my wife that same year in 1982. Oh, I forget what year 82 was, about uh, 50 years ago. I don't remember back that far, but uh, we're very fortunate to be down here now and, uh, and everything is going really well. Well, you've got a great spot, obviously. We, today we're at the Brass Monkey, your restaurant here in St. Pete Beach, actually past Grove, Florida. We've got a couple, a uh, little bit of traffic going by, but uh, it's a bustling pace for sure. And you, you and Kelly have really built a great business. Well, we've been, uh, we brought a, a little Maryland theme down to uh, Florida and uh, we have the, the colossal shrimp and the um, crab cakes that are unprecedented. So we, uh, my wife's done a hell of a job. So she's she's the brains of the outfit. And we want to thank Colton and Stoney for stopping by today. They've been a big part of this restaurant as well, and uh, they're helping us out today as we're doing our podcast, Al. Absolutely, I've been trying to get them to do a podcast because <laughs> they win. They both win in fantasy baseball, and they're so good in fantasy football. And uh, and he's a reigning champion in fantasy football. So. Uh, uh, I schooled them right, but <laughs> but uh, they know a lot more than I do right now. <laughs> well, you certainly come a long way, but as we mentioned, 1982 at the paddock, you, know, you started doing a little article for the Coconut Times, and uh, they ended up you know, gi giving you a pronostication of, of uh, NFL football, and that kind of grew into, we ended up doing a, a television show, the Stallion Sports Show on the Resort Video Guide, which the Coconut Times was our original sponsor, so Pete and Royette really gave you your start. Well, absolutely. and. Uh, and it wasn't for that. I had a chance to document everything. I had to put it in print. Everybody said, oh, you say you win, you say you win. And I said, well, let me put it in print. And uh, my, I said, when do I have, have, have to have my picks in? They go, Tuesday. I said, Tuesday? I don't have knowledge of injuries or weather conditions. And I still beat their brains in. <laughs> Well, we certainly had some fun times doing uh, the Stallion Sports Show and the Resort Video Guide uh, back in the in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, obviously, was uh, probably the heyday. I still get guys coming up to me, the people all the time saying, I used to watch your show. I love the Stallion. He made me laugh. Um, we had some fun, fun times doing that show for sure. <laughs> no question about it. A lot of turmoil. I mean, the, the times back then were little hairy you know and stuff like that you know she said he was just getting into the groove of thing they just put actually put a resort video guide on there and it was on 24 times a day i said oh my god just 20 yeah when you were wrong you were wrong 24 times a day yeah yeah but uh <laughs> we got it in print i said if i say the word three stars don't pay any attention to me if i say the word four stars you better listen to me but if i say the word five stars if you're married and you love your wife put her on it and you have twins when you come home and it's 26 7 and 2 and it's in print well you know what he's never been the most humble guy on camera but i tell you off camera he's a wonderful person you, can, you will not meet a better guy than the stallion that's for sure um you know you look back on those years too and then we decided in 1991 to kind of put a golf show together golf was getting big uh, on the eastern shore and we, and we you know we kind of said hey you know what let's let's come up with this idea um, we sat and uh, we were able to get toyota as our sponsor of uh, the carousel hotel fred wise stepped up um, it was a great big beginning back in 91 and you and i were doing the show even with the, you think i have an ugly swing have you seen this guy swing the golf club <laughs> i was hitting one iron though well, <laughs> they said god can't hit a one iron and then why are you hitting it because it goes straight <laughs> well but, uh, no i uh, no my swing is Yes, but I, I played in your golf tournament. I played pretty well in your golf tournament. I almost won all three well, of my matches. you're a natural athlete. Yeah, because I, I can putt. <laughs> Thank God I can putt. I will tell you, I just want you golfers out there to think of this. We were playing one day uh, with, with Salty and Bobby Ash and myself and the Stallion. He took the golf club back and he hit with his driver, and the head of his club hit his right toe. Now, I want you to think about how far inside he was taking the golf club. Where'd the ball go? Straight down the middle. Yeah, straight down the middle. <laughs> yeah, you gotta, Arnold Palmer didn't have a great I, swing, but he went down the middle. You got to do what you got to do. And I was there for your best round of golf at, in Pinehurst at Longleaf. You shot 72 that day, even par. It was unbelievable. Well, I got up and down from everywhere. I mean, uh, I, I used to whale driver then. I, I said, I don't know where that, that club is, but uh, that was a very... Uh, good time i don't believe i shot 72 but i remember marty bass god rest his soul he said 
Barry, you par one more hole in 16 or 17, Bobby V will be carrying his bags in. <laughs> I had Papa with my partner. Papa right was your partner. From the Green oh Turtle. God, I mean, it was amazing. Thanks but for it, a couple hundred, by it was a great. It was a great round by you that day. And uh, so many fun trips we took over the years and some, so many great golf destinations we were able to visit. You know, we, we had a chance to play Innisbrook down this way. Uh, many courses in Florida. Had some great, great Florida trips. Those golf trips that we took doing the show were kind of some of my funnest times I remember. Yeah, and the, uh, the Bermuda was really nice, and uh, the Bahamas, and uh, it was actually pretty unbelievable that we could go to these golf destinations and play. I played, I only hit forward on that Innisbrook. <laughs> I think I beat everybody's brains in. I said, all this Ocean City handicap, you're down here with the change of surface, little Bermuda. <laughs> <laughs> and he and he did beat Billy Herbst's brains in oh, that day. Of course. Pretty amazing. Well, Stally, it's always great seeing you. We're going to take a quick break, come back. We'll talk uh, some more about the Brass Monkey and, and, and what, what lies ahead for the Stally and his family in the future. So stay with us. And now a word from our sponsor. I love a good adventure. And my friends and family do too. So we all drive Toyotas, Tacomas for my rugged buds, and Corollas for my city crew. And I drive a RAV4 that I take camping, shopping, and basically everywhere else. We all picked our Toyotas because they're reliable and efficient and have amazing resale value, saving us money now and down the road. So we can make every day an adventure. Check out buyatoyota.com for deals and inventory. Toyota, let's go places. And welcome back to the Endless Golf Podcast presented by Toyota. Staying with me is my good friend, Barry Stribe, obviously better known as the Stallion and Stallion. Uh, we talked about how we got started together back, you know, in 82 and, and in 91 started the golf show, had so many golf trips. And, and now, you, now you decide, you and Kelly decide to move from the Bay Cafe in Ocean City, Maryland to here to Paso Grill. Um, you started your family and uh, really started this business almost at the same time, right? And, and it's pretty amazing. You know, we've got two wonderful boys here and also um, Brooke is obviously around as well. And, uh, and, and just a great location to have a business and to raise a family. Well, we are very fortunate and we got here at the right time and uh, we uh, saw this place open up and, and believe it or not, it was a fine dining Italian restaurant. It didn't open till four o'clock. I said, who, who comes in high heels at the beach? <laughs> I said, it's time to open up for lunch. No breakfast, just lunch and dinner. Well, you, you've done an amazing job, and the menu, like you said, has a little bit of a Maryland flair. Um, I know you've got the steamed shrimp and the crab cakes. That's something you've been very proud of, uh, even from day one. Well, we also have the, the new thing on the menu is the uh, uh, crab cake Reuben. It's a colossal lump crab cake with two pieces of Swiss cheese, homemade coleslaw, grilled rye bread, Russian dressing. It's I had to eat five of them in the first seven <laughs> days, so I would never order one ever again. <laughs> Well, it's a great location, and um, you know we talked about the fact that it is a family affair. But for people coming down here on, to go to see the Orioles in spring training, Sarasota is about an hour uh, south of us, um, and I, that's why I came over to the West Coast. I enjoyed watching Orioles beat the Yankees the other night in their uh, spring training game, which was amazing. Sarasota was beautiful. We got a chance to come here. Um, it really is a great location. And, and during football season, we know what this place turns into. It is the Ravens headquarters here in, in St. Pete Beach, Tampa Bay area. I mean, Ravens fans come from all over to watch the game here. Well, there's about 200 Ravens fans come in here. I can only put the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, even when they won the Super Bowl, I can only put them on one TV. We don't have time for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers when I beat their brains in this year over there in Tampa. And I brought them all back to reality. And please sign them. More. Well, that was my next question. And obviously, you know, we talked about uh, the, the journey and, and this being a Ravens, the Ravens headquarters. But right now, there's a little turmoil uh, with Ravens fans right now. Um, Lamar and this contract situation is getting really funnier by, or, or crazier, I should say. Not funny. It's nothing funny about it, but crazier each day. The, the amount of turns that it's taken. I mean, where are we, Barry? Well, I'll tell you where we are. What it is, is no more guaranteed contracts. You can't let Cleveland dictate for the rest of the NFL. What is Burrow going to want? He's going to want 300 million guaranteed, uh, Herbert, all those guys, and then all of a sudden it'll go to offensive linemen guaranteed money, uh, uh, wide receivers guaranteed money. You can't have that. It's, uh, you you know, the owner's meeting, I'm guarantee a, a Cleveland owner was sitting in the side <laughs> in the back door somewhere because they're not going to honor this stuff anymore. And Lamar's going to get, uh, he's, he's going to get 
uh, his money, but let him go and negotiate his own contract. I know four guys that, that just uh, were in law school that just got drafted like last year. They were lawyers. And they couldn't even understand the language of the first paragraph. It took them four days to write notes down. I don't know how your mother can <laughs> can negotiate your contract, but they have to sign him. Nobody's going to offer him anything. Just give him, uh, let him sign, and let him run rampant. Because we just signed wide receivers. It's only a matter of time, baby. Well, you know what I think with Lamar. I th I think in my I believe I still believe he will be a Raven. Um, I think they'll get get a deal done. Hopefully, all the hard feelings and all the the negotiation it, it, they can put behind them. Um, but I'd love to see him obviously get a to get a deal done sometime. I, I don't see it happening before the draft. But sometime after the draft, maybe uh, get him into training camp because with the new system coming on board, with the new offensive coordinator, he needs to be at the mini camps and then in training camp as well. No, no question. And uh, and if he is in the training camp, it will be. I think all the bad blood and stuff will ease because they, the, the Ravens made the right move. If you, if you, somebody wants to offer you that contract, tell me who it is. We'll match it, and then let them do all the homework for us. I mean, they, nobody's going to let us do the homework because we're going to match well, it. To and nobody point, wants yeah. to give two fifty guaranteed and yeah. two first band. That's pick. the problem. Nobody, you know, somebody may be, may be willing to pay him, but they're not going to pay him and then give give uh, give away two first round draft picks. You know. Paying one person that much money puts your team in a tough, you can't surround them with a lot of talent. You know, you talk about what Mahomes has done, and he's, they structured his contract to be friendly. Burrow said the same thing. Um, I really think the NFL Players Association uh, is, is standing behind Lamar and in, in Lamar's ear as well, and I don't think that's helping the situation no, either. No, so, not. Absolutely um, not. You it's going to be, it's not going to be a fun off season here for the Ravens fans. No, it's, it's just going to be drama, but... Uh, you know, but it's Orioles season. It's baseball but yeah, season. Yeah, I know it's baseball. We were only four games out of the wild card last year, so and this analytics uh, drives me nuts. I know I talk to the ex manager, uh, uh, Sam Palazzo, comes in all the time, and his analytics just kills him. I said, but you can't start paying three hundred million dollars for one baseball player, and then you don't have anybody else. You know. Um, you need pitching analytics, and I mean, look at the Rays. The Rays are going to win 90, 95 games, uh, win the division, and then we spend 50 million. So it's all analytics. It's a farm system, and that's what uh, Hyde's doing. And I think he's making the right move. But I just don't like the analytics when you have uh, Snell uh, a two-hit shutout in the sixth inning, and you take him out because of analytics in the seventh game of the World Series. Let me. It, Years ago, if you try to come out and tell Nolan Ryan in the sixth inning with a two-hit shutout with nine strikeouts that I'm taking you out for a reliever, <laughs> he'd have punched your lights out. I mean, it's it's just ridiculous. So, yeah. But that's the way the game's being played right now. So you got to deal with what you're dealt. It's amazing. The game has definitely changed. It's uh, it's almost like slow pitch softball from the fact it's a it's a home run league. You know, you don't see a lot of hit and runs. You don't see a lot of stealing. And they don't know how to bun up. And then with the shift, was they did away the with shift, the shift, yeah. but they did away with it. But the guys couldn't hit the other way. They didn't want to hit the other way. There's no money hitting the other way. Yeah. The money's hitting home runs and, and power hitting in baseball. That's where the if, money is. Well, if Chris Davis could bunt down the third baseline, <laughs> he'd still be playing. I can tell you that. All right, Sal, you're looking forward to a, a great year from the Orioles. A lot of a good young players. Uh, it should be fun, but we'll always be looking for football season right here at the Brass Monkey. Uh, thanks again for taking some time out no to, to talk about, you know, our business and, and how we kind of went together. It's been a great journey and looking for, forward to many more years just hanging out, having fun. Well, I still got your picture up there with this uh, <laughs> Coconut Times, our first show at Fagers Island. So we're, it's still here and uh, it's really nice to have to watch, be able to watch you down here in Florida, the analyst golf and how it's uh, taken off to another level. So uh, and, and do a good job. But uh, try coming over on the West Coast and let's play Innisbrook again. <laughs> I want those pigeons so bad up there, it's ridiculous. All right. For the Stallion, Barry Stribe, I'm Bobby Vermillion. We'll see you next time. So long, everybody. Bingo, baby. The Endless Golf Podcast has been brought to you by Toyota.